Hi to everyone. Thanks for having invited me here. Uh, there is little time and uh, big data, so I will try to be really uh, quick uh, with an overview uh, on my work uh, about big data. So I yeah, I'm a media artist, and um, some projects are actually uh, pretty much about big data, and I will focus on them. So my art is... Um, I can say that it's about reconfiguring uh, information asymmetries of power of structures. And it's pretty much about recontextualization of big personal data, financial data, but in general sensible data. That's what I focus on. And uh, so it's big data for big engagement in terms of people engaged in this uh, data and how I want to reach a big audience, that means big data. But in this engagement, uh, I often have also a type of um, casualty, uh, kind of collateral damage from my artworks because in big data there is also someone that eventually don't want to be involved uh, in my work. And so it happens that uh, after um, uh, publishing the project I usually have corporate media personal legal reaction. There's also something common uh, in my project as you will see. And uh, some question that I am interested on uh, through my work is the ownership of data, so open versus private. And it was interesting to see uh, open data um, when it comes down to privacy. And, uh, and so the other point is privacy versus transparency, and that is a really big important thing when you're working with open data. And then uh, I try to have effective, have, having effective social change through artistic use of uh, data. So I would start from this project that is actually 2007, probably before then um, uh, open, uh, de big data was a thing. So it's called um, people quote people. Uh, this is like the offline installation and basically there are quotes uh, about uh, plagiarism, but actually there are misquotations, so the author is not the uh, real one of the, um, the quote. And that uh, come here in this website called People Quote People, that is about 3,000 quotes by important and famous uh, people that uh, every time that you load this page uh, are remixed. So you never know uh, who is the real author of these quotes. And over the... Um, uh, is, probably seven years that this project is, is um, this website is uh, um, online, I probably spread uh, well, quite a bit of misquotation. And here is about the overproduction, creative production that we have with the internet. After all, also artworks become uh, big data at this point when uh, there are so many artists and so um, many uh, creative minds out there. So this is just like a really old project. Uh, let's uh, go uh, to see different strategies that I have uh, in using uh, big data. Um, and so I focus on uh, uh, particular cut characteristics. So it can be about the form, the quality, the quantity, the, the sensitivity, and the value of data. And uh, I try to unveil uh, new meanings out of this data because data for it by itself doesn't have any meaning. And how do I do that? By recontextualizing data. So I am not really interested in mapping or info design or this type of visualization of data, but it's more interesting for me to uh, recontextualize the data as another environment to figure out, um, to give it uh, a new uh, meaning and unveiling new meaning. And so uh, sometimes it's about even materialization of this uh, data and then it's, it's uh, uh, performed, subverted and so on. And that will be clear um, by presenting the next project that is face to Facebook that was actually presented here in Transmediale 2011 with Alessandro Ludovico that I think is uh, in the room too. So this was probably the first project with real big data uh, and it was about uh, harvesting uh, one million uh, profile of Facebook all over the world. So it was basically just a, a script starting from one uh, random person on Facebook and uh, scraping, uh, collecting uh, the name, surname, and the public profile, and from that looking for random eight friends and doing the same in a recursive way, so potentially harvesting all the data of Facebook. And uh, then uh, has been filtered 
um, all this database of one million people, sorry, uh, let's go online, um, um, has been filtered um, with the facial recognition software to figure out which facial expression they add, and then all this data has been published on this dating website uh, without the authorization of these people, of course, <laughs> and ended up to be uh, a database of 250,000 um, people, so the 25% of the big data that I add, basically uh, giving rid of um, all the noise. And so here, uh, the functionality were uh, pretty um, interesting. So you could find for a potential partner from your country with a specific likes about a movie and so on, and especially with a, a type of temperament, climber, funny, mild, and so on. Um, so this generated quite a lot of reaction, as I say, the personal reaction, people that overreact because they didn't want to be on this dating website. After a week, we received the first um, season and season letter from Facebook. And so we had to shut down this, uh, this website just after a week, but we uh, documented all the reaction. Um, Facebook asked to give back them all this data that we didn't do. So this is actually the, um, the dating website that I still have uh, on a private uh, server uh, that is not public, but we still have all this data for us. So I am moving on with a, a similar approach with uh, another project that is uh, persecuting us. So also in this case was about focusing on the quantity of the mm, data. And so it's again a database of one million Americans sorted by political affiliation. So I was basically harvesting every single person that was tweeting about the US election, like just mentioning Obama with an hashtag. But not just that person, but 100 friends of that person that tweeted. So I also analyzed the social connection that that person had. And then through um, was actually um, quite um, hard, but um, through other um, data that they add, I, I try to sort them and give them a, a kind of a rate. So this, for example, in the homepage, there are uh, extremist activists because they're really left wing or right wing, but you can go down to like 10% uh, right wing and so on. So this is real people. And so you can click on a profile of this person. Um, like this, like uh, the um, page, uh, uh, I, I, there is really big data. So. Um, I don't know how many people and who is these people. But this, for example, is a guy that is uh, right wing. And uh, in some cases, I can also uh, track where he lives. Now it's just say Texas, but sometimes they leave the exact position, geolocation. And then you can actually persecute this guy and tweet <laughs> to him and send him a threat, say, a hey, uh, fucking uh, fascist, go to hell. And this is basically a project try to engage uh, people in an info civil war uh, in a way, and so uh, basically pushing what is happening every day on uh, Twitter. Okay, moving on. Um, another project that uh, is about uh, big data somehow is on um, uh, Google Street View. So Google Street View, it is big data because Google uh, collects picture of every single corner uh, of uh, thousands of cities around the world. And with that, it also collect all the type of data like open Wi-Fi and so on and try to, um, to profile um, houses and public space and so on. So in this case, though, with this project, it didn't focus on the quantity of that data, but on the form of the data. So I tried to um, um, visualize it, materialize it, and uh, bring it back from the point where it was extracted. So really briefly, um, basically look for um, random people on Google Street View, and when I find some uh, interesting picture of someone, I take a screenshot of that, and then I um, print that picture, uh, real size, uh, uh, human size, uh, somehow with an estimation. And then uh, since it's a print paper, I go back to the exact spot where that picture has been captured by, the, by Google, and I paste it at the exact location. So on this side, you have the picture on Google Street View, the, the screenshot in, the, in this uh, side, you have my poster, basically. So in this case, um, 
um, again, uh, the, the, the big data is materialized in a different um, way. But what is interesting uh, that also come out with the, the name, the ghost, they are ghosts from the past. Most of these pictures are pretty old, like in Berlin, they're all from the 2007. And so these are people coming back from the past that appear back from uh, our world. And we eventually will be all ghosts because all our data on Facebook and Twitter in 200 years will be uh, you know, traded in different way. And we, of course, we won't have control over that. So this is uh, just a way to bring up um, bigger discourse. And then also what happened when you uh, bring back uh, data that is uh, virtualized uh, to the physical world and so other critical point emerge and then about who is the owner of this picture? Is that person, is Google, who is allowed to use this type of material in artistic context as an artist? Can I use this material? And so I also keep the watermark, uh, the watermark on this picture so it comes with the copyright and so on. And the interesting point that this uh, person, for example, is a casualty of this info war again between a crazy artist like me, uh, Google, uh, the legislator that should regulate these things, and also the algorithms that try to blur these pictures. So that is really an info war where also an artist like me can play. And uh, unfortunately, this guy has been um, captured in this war. <laughs> Um, moving on, uh, so um, these three projects were about privacy, and uh, there, there is no time to go through, but they also developed a little theory about this uh, way to engage random crowd in my work without their authorization and permission, and that's something that is completely new, it's actually an opportunity for an artist somehow. Uh, having like millions of people all of a sudden involved in my artwork and having this engagement, people that write me and uh, react in a good and a bad way. And it's also interesting how these reactions are pretty similar in all these cases. So I won't go through uh, all this text uh, and I move on in to this project. That's another approach to big data and uh, it's actually about open data and transparency and it's much more recent and is loophole for all. So going online. <clears throat> So Look for All is uh, um, about offshore finance and uh, Cayman Islands um, uh, companies. So in this case, I went to uh, the website of the Cayman Island Registry, that's basically a governmental um, uh, website, and you can ask permission to see uh, the list of their company, the, all the company incorporated there. So I ask permission, although it came with uh, um, legal disclaimer to not use that data. And they created a script that was looking for every possible company registered in the Cayman Islands. So I managed to basically steal all that database that ended up to be over 200,000 companies in the Cayman Islands, every single company registered in the Cayman Islands. And so was the really uh, poor information that they had because it was just about the name of the company and the, their tax number. Um, uh, related to the company. So I was keep investigating about this issue for months, uh, if not year, till I ended up to um, finding on, um, uh, finding about the, uh, this document that is certificate of incorporation on, the, um, on um, sec the Security Exchange Commission website, the US Security Commission, oh, there is Wi-Fi. And so I started to issue this counterfeited um, certificate of incorporation with actually my name. And so what happened? That this document, this uh, certificate of incorporation that is loading, is basically the ID, is the passport of these companies. The, the reason why these companies are in the Cayman Island is because of secrecy, anonymity in a way. So Cayman Island government sell that anonymity. So you don't know who is the real owner of those companies. But because you don't know who is the real, comp the, the real owner, everyone can pretend to be that owner. So basically this website promote to steal the identities of this real company based on the Cayman Island and using that identity to avoid taxes on shore like in Germany. 
So you could buy this certificate of incorporation uh, issued uh, through my name that I just pretend to be the registrar of company the Cayman Island and signed with my real signature. So you could buy this document in a really cheap version, 99 cents, or even printed uh, on other option. And through that, uh, uh, through this document, you could start to invoice with the, that company. So these uh, uh, generated a few reaction. <laughs> I was surprised. <laughs> I didn't know about that document. You know, it could be important or not. Back at the time, I wasn't sure it was important, but it was. And this is actually, this generated the reaction of the Cayman Island press. So it was uh, on TV, in the national TV at the Cayman Island uh, on a couple of newspapers. But that is, this is even more interesting because it's from Bermuda. So this is a newspaper from Bermuda that say, oh no, this artist is going to come here and target Bermuda too with the same <laughs> type of document. And this is like actually a national newspaper in the Bermuda, and so it basically found out that was a vulnerability even beyond the Cayman Island. And so this is, for example, a few comments that have been written uh, uh, on a Cayman Island article. And so it's interesting because they generated a debate inside the Cayman Island when it's actually an issue always debated outside the Cayman Island. So someone say, why doesn't the government of Cayman Island sue this guy? And the ones uh, else say, a comedian might say that the real ones are also fake. That is true. And so, and then I, t I started to receive a legal threat uh, via email that uh, to me sounded really common uh, with other projects that I had. And so this, for example, is um, a company, uh, a real company that came in Ireland and just say, I don't want to be on this, dating, uh, on this uh, website. These companies are really low-key companies, so they are honest business and they came in Ireland. And again, this is a casualty in big data in a way. They didn't want to target them, but it happened. And uh, so they just say, don't want to be here, and that uh, happened for a few companies that they just say, please remove my name from there. And it's interesting because these people that uh, dare to write me because they don't have any problem to unveil their real name, uh, the problem is who doesn't write me because they don't want to unveil the real name, and that, that is much trickier. And so um, it gets get more um, uh, heavy, and so for example, this is an um, accounting firm that say you are doing something really illegal and you're affecting my business, of course, because they are selling companies there. There is no time to go through. And this gets more aggressive. You get this off today. I am going to the cops and so on. Literally, here is this guy is saying, I am going to the next uh, police station here at the Cayman Island uh, and <laughs> I will track you down. And this guy was really aggressive. But he also said, This company is completely legal, legit, you know, it's certified and so on. And this was still a, a real kind of low profile company. And uh, at this point, uh, I removed that company, and this guy say, okay, I agree, probably also on your social point, political point, that is in quite, quite interesting that these people <laughs> actually, after all, they say, you have done a great stuff, by the way. But be worried, because uh, there are some criminals here that may use other type of um, um, way to look after you. And this is a letter that I received a week ago. It's a proper season. This is letter from a huge, you unfortunately you cannot read the address, it's a huge law firm from China based in Hong Kong and in Beijing that say remove now these four companies from that website. And this is a really big company managing wealth for um, the elite of Chinese. And they received these uh, letter the, the same day, uh, the same day um, that the media started to unveil all this scandal of Chinese elite having offshore account in the British Virgin Island. So probably these are connected to that scandal, but I don't know, and uh, I just unfortunately had to remove these names from that um, website. And this, by the way, is the PayPal that also reacted and froze all the money that I made because I actually was selling these identities. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, they, they banned me from PayPal. And, uh, <laughs> and the interesting thing that is PayPal is based in Luxembourg and is avo avoiding taxes for billions, too. <laughs> I think that is all, probably.